Yo, what up? Looking like the feds raided Diddy's house and took the tapes made in a sex dungeon away from him. Now, unfortunately for Diddy and Usher, some of them got leaked. Puff and Usher did have a situation. And that situation led Usher to the hospital. Now, I let Usher explain that to y'all. I let Usher tell that story. But how dare you say a man that groomed you, you gonna give him a pass. Bro, you know I know. Let me, re let, let me reframe you on something. Remember, Usher? We was at the Swiss Hotel. Puff was had Kim in the room. Had one of Keith Sweat's baby mothers in the in in the uh the big room outside the master bedroom. He came outside in his robe. He came outside in his robe. She gave him a fellatio right there. His back was turned to me. She gave him a fellatio. You knocked on the door. I came and opened the door for you. Puff went in the room. You came in the room and kissed that girl dead in the mouth. Now I'm telling that because you take enough for somebody that you know and a lot of more people know didn't do you right when you was at Diddy Camp. Y'all put it together. And what you mean by Diddy Count? Remember? He was on um, one of the talk shows. The white guy with the curly hair. What's his name? Um, the white guy with the curly hair. And he said, yo, would you send your son to Diddy Camp? And I just said, no, no. Ask him why he won't send him to Diddy Camp. But yet and still, you praise him. Damn, man. And you said that, I know you can't go into detail, but you said that uh, it was a situation where Diddy sent him to the hospital? Let Usher explain that to you. Let Usher mama explain that to you. And the hospital was in Scarsdale, New York. Moved to New York City. And I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. <laughs> to learn Flavor some... Camp. Yeah, Flavor Camp. Yeah, that's camp. what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's In the 90s. Do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, not really. I Come mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was, and it was, <laughs> but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. It was, so nobody it was tried to, you know, some woman didn't come along. I didn't and, say that. Okay. I, I didn't but say you that. Didn't, <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place. Uh huh. And I didn't necessarily understand it. Uh huh. Biggie Smalls was Biggie there. Biggie Smalls was there. Lil Kim, Craig Mack. All you know, these people all are hanging these, around. All, yeah, man. Faith Evans. Jodeci, Mary okay? J. Blosh. They ain't know nothing about this shit. Oh. <laughs> I was having a good time. You know what I mean? Does he have you doing any chores? Are you doing dishes at all? I mean, to keep you humble somewhat? Or are you just like, can you stay up till four in the morning with them and party? I mean, I could. I yeah. actually stayed up longer than them. And, I, and what kind, and do you have money? What's going on? I mean, I had like per diem. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I had like, you know, what like a, a living. life. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. 14 years old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to Puffy Camp? <laughs> now, while we blame Diddy for grooming Usher and introducing him to wild parties, we can't help but fault Usher's mama for letting him stay with Diddy at such an impressionable age. You know, Puff is making jokes about how they used to wrestle for the Frosted Flakes in the morning. and Yeah, I bet they did. You know. <laughs> somebody frosted you know, some, somebody frosted somebody flakes. <laughs> Without the milk. <laughs> what do you think it is that keeps Usher from coming out or saying anything? Because, yo, dog, he, it, it's, it's, you got to realize in that industry, 
a lot of people are stand back and say, well, it happened to me. That's how some of them people pay their dues. And the people who don't go down like that don't be as great as the ushers, as the ditties. It's a way of passage to certain people in the entertainment business. With all these people coming out against Diddy, do you think more people are going to come out? It's a lot of people that, you know, see, you got to realize is that everybody think, oh, everybody's coming out now. It's a lot of people that wanted to bring stuff out long time ago, but the lawyers wouldn't take it. The lawyers wouldn't deal with it. Cassie opened up a floodgate for lawyers to look at people's cases now and say, yeah, we might can get some money out of that. We might can do that. Yeah, he did abuse you. Nobody really cared at first. But now they see that a lot of this stuff may have some truth to it and the people can be paid for it. They coming out. Some about uh, yeah, puppy this flavor is camp. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and play this. Watch oh, it's it. about a minute, right? Yeah. Okay. Wait till the end, though. To New York City, and I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you York over to City. something called Puffy Flavor. He's thirteen camp. at yeah. the time. Let him hear it. Go back yeah, five seconds, what, please. Go back because what what he called it right there is what's key. Go ahead. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. To learn <laughs> some... Flavor Camp. Yeah, Flavor that's camp. what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's gonna In pre- the 90s. Do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, nah, not really. Not I mean, really. Did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it, and it was, and it was. <laughs> but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. So nobody old. tried to, yeah. you know, some woman didn't come along. I didn't say that. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't say that. <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things yeah, taking that's place, called rape. Uh-huh. and I didn't necessarily understand. Uh-huh. But you're 13. Uh-huh. Biggie Smalls was there. Biggie Smalls was there. Lil Kim, Craig Mack. All know, these people all are hanging these, around. All, yeah, man. Faith Evans. Jodeci, Mary okay? J. Blige, yeah, good they job. learned about this shit. Oh. <laughs> I was having a good time, you know what I mean? You are 13. Did you have to doing any chores? Are you doing dishes at all? I mean, to keep you doing humble ditty. somewhat? So or crazy. are you just like, can you stay up till four in the morning with them and party? I mean, I could. I yeah. actually stayed up longer than them. And, I, and, what, and do you, you have money? Money? Okay. How is that normal? Like, how have, is that normal at you, any time? Do you have the part where they said... Would you let your kids go there? He goes, oh, keep playing. hell no. Yeah. Keep playing it, Rob? Because I think it's at the end. Yeah. Per damn. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, had, I had like, yeah, you know, like a living. life. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. 14 years old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to Puffy Camp? <laughs> hell no. <laughs> See? Yeah, what? that's the thing. Right? I have kids. I don't even post. And then, uh, you know, the Twitter trolls will be, where, where are her kids? Well, I'm protecting them. And, yeah. and, and this is sad. I mean, this is sad. And this one with Bieber. This is the Bieber thing. one. Yeah. Like, where are the parents? Yeah. And what, yeah. Well, which parent would say, you know what? We don't know you. We know that you're a celebrity. Go and hang out with this guy for weeks on end by yourself. And at what mm-hmm. time, at what era is this cool? In the most critical years, by yeah, the way. Yeah, exactly. How was this, Alina? They Have both this turn. How is this normal? So they both big. turn into superstars. Yeah. That's the sacrifice yeah, well, you make. Yeah, well, yeah, that's the sacrifice. But one of them had to go to church and he freaking lost his mind. Can you play this one? How is this normal? He's in, you ever seen the movie 48 Hours? Right now, he's having 48 Hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, they're having the times of their lives, like, like, like you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um, we, we can't really disclose, but, um, it's definitely a 15 year old's dream. What the? Um, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I have been given custody of him. You know, he yeah. signed the Usher. I'm signed to Usher. I, I, I had legal guardianship of Usher when, when, you know, he, he did his first album. I did yes. Usher's first album. I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, he's with me. So, um, and yeah. Jesus. Um, she- now, the details of what was done to Usher was reported to be horrific. Now, I just don't understand why he would tape it, though. Maybe he thought he'd never get caught.
you right now in light of all the allegations that's against him and what he's going through right now in the world of the press, the Homeland Security and being in this house of Miami and L.A. and all of this other stuff. I don't want to believe none of it. Innocent until proven guilty, damn it. But the bottom line is we've seen folks in the industry uh, be gotten after b before. I don't know if we've ever seen it on this level. level. Your thoughts? Prayer. Oh, pray for mm. uh, the way the world is set up where everybody can chime in on your life. Yep. It's kind of unfair. Totally. When you're going through, you know, a situation like he's going through. But um, nobody, nobody knows. There's always three. His side of the story, the people's and the actual truth. Mm. Well, you got to wait to see what comes out. This, this is a quick, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I think he, you know, I think he's getting a lot of negative, you know, people kicking him while he's going through it. I don't, I don't think that's that cool, but no, it ain't. I think you got to mind your business and just see what happens and try to pray for him. Not over something like this. I'll be damned if anybody going to sit up there and say, I'm saying he's guilty. I don't want to believe he's guilty of such a thing. As far as I'm concerned, you're innocent until proven guilty. I don't know anything. But I do feel it's fair to ask this next question. How is and was he viewed? in the hip hop industry as a person, as a producer, a guy. Talk about what, when folks bring up Sean P. Diddy Combs, what were the thoughts that came to everybody's mind in that genre? A great mogul, you know what I mean? He did, he started from the bottom as an intern and turned and made a, a, a billion dollar label. Mm -hmm. or turned himself to a billionaire or close to a billionaire, or, you know what I mean? And he was beloved. Mm -hmm. Some of the best parties yes. without, you yes. know, yeah. that I ever been to in I my went, life. I went to a couple. You know I, I can confirm that, yes. And um, that's it. People loved him. He loved to have fun. He loved to make music, make it. He helped change my life. How? You know what I mean? He gave my first record there. Yeah. Whether it was a good deal or a bad deal, it still <laughs> it gave me an opportunity to, right. to do to be here with you today. So you know what I mean. We gotta just see, like you said, innocent to proven guilty, and nobody knows what's going on except him and and whoever's involved. So I ain't got no problem saying this about Diddy. I love his business acumen. I love to go get him mentality. Definitely one of the I most love... impeccable businessmen of all time. I love how he pushed and encouraged all of us to go for it in the world of business. That's my interpretation mm -hmm. based on a few conversations that I've had with him in my life. Now, he's trying to own an NBA team. A few years ago, he was trying to, he was trying to be a part of a group to buy the Charlotte Hornets. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to be a part of that. That's how I spoke to him. What about you? What about you in terms of what he had the push that that's what I if you if you've this. been around I mean I'm looks to me like they don't want to call him out on what he's done to us or other people um let, let's get right into because we got a lot of stuff to get into yes, we got we a lot do. of stuff and it's, especially as it entails you directly and in a good way but before we <laughs> even get into that I gotta ask you right now yeah. you know about this case and we've talked about this case against Sean P. Diddy Combs obviously being accused of sexual assault sexual trafficking engaging in other criminal activity um You've seen all of this take place, all of this come in motion. What were your thoughts when you first heard about it? Well, you know, Stephen, I can't say I'm surprised. Unfortunately, you know, we are still very much uh, as a society and as a culture um, dealing with the uh, continued reckoning, as it will, with, with Me Too. So we know it, no industry is untouched. Uh, and so there was just a matter of time before we saw more of it as it relates to hip hop. Um, so the allegations are horrendous. Uh, we all kind of, I think, were rocked a bit in late November 2023 when we saw the original uh, Cassie of it all, which which really started what became a snowball mm -hmm. um, of what we've seen thus far. There's at least six uh, current litigation uh spaces in which he's named and the most recent being where he's a named defendant not accused of sex assault uh but of aiding and abetting the sex assault of allegedly his son uh, we're talking about uh 
Christian Combs. That's right. Yeah, so so it's, it's sad, it's heavy. Uh, of course, all allegations at this point, he's not been convicted of anything. Um, in fact, he's not been criminally charged that's right. of anything. And I what think are we that's to make important. of that? What do we yeah. make about the fact that it's been going on for weeks now? We've yeah. seen Homeland Security raid his homes in both Miami and Los Angeles, yeah. but no arrest has taken place. Because of your legal mind, your legal expertise, what mm-hmm. do you make about the fact that those charges have been have been leveled against him as of yet? I, I don't make much of it, Stephen. Yeah. The, the feds are fedding. That's what that tells me. The federal government is, we, we've been aware for weeks. I assure you this has been going on for months in terms of the investigation. Uh, months of uh, co- uh, collecting evidence, co- uh, getting witnesses to collaborate particular stories and testimonies. Uh, what we're seeing now are kind of probably the final stages mm-hmm. of what this investigation looks like. We know the recent, uh, you're talking about the home, and I want to yes. get back to the Homeland Security Homeland piece, Security. not the FBI. That's right. All federal agencies, but they're a little different. I want to spend some time there in a second, put a pin in it. Uh, but the fact that they specifically, Stephen A., recently collected cell phones, other electronic devices, uh, that's kind of the end of the road, as we say. Those are going to be the final pieces that they're looking to corroborate, probably some pre-existing testimonials for some, for, I would imagine, uh, a long list of potential witnesses. Let's go there for a second. When we talk about Homeland yeah. Security, yeah. the difference between local PD, mm-hmm. FBI, mm-hmm. Homeland Security, what are we to make of the fact that Homeland Security is the one that raided these homes as opposed to the FBI or local police? It, it, that part is fascinating to me. Now, now that's where I'm interested, really, really interested, because normally we would see uh, sex trafficking, racketeering. It sounds a lot like recently what we saw with R. Kelly. Uh, it sounds like other things we've seen in the headlines. Uh, the fact that it's not the FBI and it's Homeland Security. Homeland Security, Stephen A., is a relatively new federal uh, division. Okay. Uh, we just got it post 9-11. It is a direct result of 9-11. So it triggers certain things, right? It normally triggers terrorism, to be quite direct, uh, issues around border, border control, border safety. So, so when you think of some of these civil litigations that name Puffy right now, some of them also include uh, the illegal selling of arms, mm-hmm. the illegal selling of drugs, in addition to the sex trafficking. So um, I don't want to put the cart before the horse. We don't want to do uh, any, any too, uh, too much speculation here, but there's something awry Mm -hmm. where they're thinking that there is something dealing with the border issue and potentially a foreign threat of some nature. It's got to be in the mix for them to go with homeland security. And the one one thing that comes to my mind is when we're talking about sex trafficking, obviously, that's something that could be of an international variety and obviously it entails crossing the borders and that might be the justification as to why homeland Homeland security got involved. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at the case's former girlfriend, Cassie Ventura. Mm -hmm. Uh, She brought against him. It was settled a day after it was filed. Is that what set all of this in motion in your estimation? It did. I can't help it. When you read it, I I think of what my grandmother would have said, a day late and a dollar short. Um, One day. uh, One day. day. Well, and and let's kind of just name it, right? The one day says that obviously uh, Mr. Combs and his legal team might have thought this was a bluff. Mm -hmm. Uh, And sometimes this happens uh, when you're on the back end, uh, meaning you're you're on the um, legal representation side of Mm -hmm. these types of lawsuits, Stephen A. Know that before somebody walks that lawsuit and gets it filed in the clerk of court, there have been numerous what we call pre-litigation conversations. Mm. Lawyers picking up the phone, calling your legal team. Well, do we have an opportunity to settle this? Well, I don't think so. Well, all of that led to no uh, resolution, which Mm. is why the lawsuit was actually filed and then settled a day later. It tells me, Stephen A., that they likely thought that the lawsuit would never actually see the light of day, Mm. that there would be so much probably fear, anxiety, hesitation, that some of the, uh, I mean, let's just say, uh, horrendous and horribly egregious details that we all read in that very lengthy lawsuit from Mm -hmm. Cassie uh, would never want to be exposed. The fact that there was a willingness to finally go there publicly uh, prompted the quick, very quick, 24 hours. I don't think I've ever seen something publicly so quick, uh, the settlement there. And yes, to answer your question, it set everything in motion. It opened the door, as we say, uh, to now what we're seeing as as a litany of of, uh, civil litigation attempts. Another woman, Mm -hmm. Joey Dickerson Neal. Yeah. She filed a lawsuit a day before the Adult Survivors Act expired. Yes, she First did. of all, explain the Adult Survivors Act, please, and its relevance. I can. Um, so I just recently um, 
uh, stepped aside from my tenure. I served six years, Stephen A., on a board of directors for a wonderful organization called Safe Horizon. Uh, we are the largest victims advocacy group uh, for services of victims of violent crime uh, in the country. <clears throat> we specialize on New York. Uh, I named the organization because we were very vital in leading what became a legislative effort. So I want to be very clear. The uh, Sexual Survivors Act is a law. It is specific to the state of New York, mm. and it allows a look-back window of one year. It says that if you have been abused and, and you want to be able to prove that in a court of civil law, so none of this is criminal, no. this is civil, these are lawsuits, civil litigation remedies, uh, you have one year to bring your claim. A claim that previously would have not been viable due to statutes of limitations. Mm -hmm. So you could have been alleging that you were <clears throat> assaulted or harmed uh, a 20, decade ago. 30, 40 yes. years ago. Well, literally. Dickinson Neal claims that nearly 32 years ago, the incident with her and, and P. Diddy Holmes took place. Uh, let's think about, uh, what's it, Jean Carroll uh, okay. recently won her lawsuit against Trump. I think it's on appeal again now. Now, I don't know about all that, man. I kind of doubt Diddy's going to be able to get out of this one. Now, Diddy's former bodyguard, Gene Deal, has made it known that he kept tapes of the elites who attended his freak-off parties. Now, it's only pretty natural that the feds find all those incriminated tapes in the house. After the worst is niggas' ass is... Niggas are shitting like crazy right now. <laughs> People are going... Worry, worry, worry. Every time they do a knock on the phone ring, is that the police? Is that... <laughs> is that, is they, are they coming? Or, they call it. They want me to come. Because you're going to have two type of people that's, uh, the law enforcement going to be contacting now. They were going to be contacting victims. Meaning some of the men that laying up there with their wives and acting like they, and they're going to be getting contact. Some of them done did some heterosexual stuff. Some of them done did some gay stuff. But they're going to be getting contact. But more importantly, who's going to be getting in contact? It's victims as well. Oh, I talked about the victims. It's suspects. People that were doing shit with him at the Diddy parties. And so, man, there's only one person that I'm worried about that's been bragging about and used to brag about going to Diddy parties. That I hope they don't contact them in the month of... Well, I hope they never contact me. But definitely, definitely not from April and May. And hopefully we make it to June. I hope like hell they don't contact them because y'all know I'm a major Laker fan. Y'all know I am. Everybody know ain't no party like a Diddy party, so... Yeah, yeah that's what's up. Yeah. 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 But people like this, they're going to start erasing stuff like this. So y'all better get them, tag them, save them. Because look what my boy, look what my boy LBJ23 said. Damn, Bob first. People like that. And y'all, I love that nigga as a basketball player right after MJ and Kobe. Kobe, y'all know, is my favorite. Shaq is my second favorite. And then... Of course, LeBron, and I hope like hell they don't contact people like that. But trust me, trust me, trust me, it's a lot of people like that. That's going to be, <laughs> that shit in bricks right now. <laughs> Y'all watch. Yep. Yep. How's this right here? Yep. Stevie. You see this body right here? Hold on, wait. It's a hair right there. Hold on. <laughs> Stand by. The next few months going to be real interesting because they're going through these tapes. They're going through them, and they got some tapes. They got some tapes. People that was on no planes, y'all hear that? How they subpoenaing everybody that ever flew on the plane with Puffy. Where they go? Who's all on that plane with them? That's what's about to happen, y'all. Ain't shit happening. Ain't nothing going to happen real soon. It's going to be a major investigation going down for the next three or four months. But y'all going to learn. Y'all going to learn a lot about some of y'all heroes. Y'all going to learn about a lot of y'all heroes. And that was the reason for the rage, y'all. It's to see what he had that he was holding on and over people's heads. 
And it appears from the amount of evidence that was taken out of those homes, he was keeping them. He was keeping his trophies. <laughs> he treated tapes like trophies. Yeah, that would be my take. The Cassie um, court filing that a prosecutor was going to pick up on some of the information she gave because some of the information that she gave in her lawsuit was criminal. So when they looked at that, people don't understand it could be a civil lawsuit, but a person makes statements in regards to some criminal activity, a prosecutor can look up that information and then try to prosecute the individual that they're talking about. Yeah, okay. Now, well, that's what's been the thing is like a lot of people are saying now, I believe TMZ has reported that Cassie is cooperating. She have to. Because they would subpoena her. You understand what I'm saying? Why wouldn't she cooperate? She got $30 million already. Right. She got the 30 mil, and it looked like she's turning around and, and cooperating. And, I mean, man, it's, it's, Cam, it's really bad. Cam, you she's know, but, a victim. The thing she's a victim. If she's a victim and they deem her to be a victim, she's going to cooperate with the authorities. What's she going to do? You know the law. The law states is that they subpoena you. You come in and you tell them what you're supposed to. If you don't tell them what, what uh, they ask you questions to and you, you evoke your Fifth Amendment right, you have to, the judge can hold you in contempt and keep you in jail for the life of the crime. I mean, for the life of the, uh, yeah, the life of the, uh, the, uh, the court proceedings. So why would she go through that stuff? She go in there and answer the questions they ask her. Now, do you think, now that, that's kind of tricky though, don't you think? Because she was with Diddy for like 10 years. You don't think she was part of any of these crimes or anything? Bro, this is not tricky because when she come in and they testify uh, for them, they're gonna give her immunity over anything that happened. Because you got to realize they don't want her. They want him. Mm. So the, the DA is going to say, yo, listen to me. Anything that you tell us, you know, even though it's a criminal act that you were doing and stuff like that, we're going to give you immunity. You're going to be one of our witnesses. You, she's she's going to be witness for the prosecution. Mm. Okay. Now, with all this going on with Cassie, I mean, do you think there's a lot of other women too that are that are cooperating also? All the people that they find on those tapes, when they want one individual, all they're gonna do is make a plea, make a deal with them. When they make a deal with them, you understand, to testify what they know or what they want them to testify to, you know what I'm saying? They're gonna make sure that they get them immunity for any wrongdoings that they did and let them know what Puff did. Man, okay. So when this happened, when the raid went down, everybody thought Diddy was running. Everybody thought he was going to go to a, a country that doesn't extradite, and they were kind of comparing it to like Russell Simmons. How Russell Simmons went to a country too. Right. What'd you think? Well, I think that he wasn't going to go no. They knew where he was at. They got your phones tapped. They're going to stop your flights or whatever. They knew exactly where he was at. I don't think that uh, when they have a warrant, a search warrant for a residence, it's not, a, it's not for a body. If they had one for a body, they would have brought it in. Now, if... They would have went there and they found guns, drugs, and Diddy was there, they would have brought him in. You know what I'm saying? They would have brought him in. Like they brought his sons in. And then they want to know 
Well, why are these unlicensed guns in the house? Um, who drugs do these belong to? All those things like that. But a lot of people probably believe that, you know, they just want to know and the government want to know what things those people were doing on those tapes and who was doing shit on those tapes. Because I heard they, they found like 250 cameras or something like that. That's what they say. They said they found a lot of cameras. Right. There's a lot of rumors about him recording some of these parties and he's using a lot of this stuff for blackmail, like a lot of celebrities, even as far as politicians. You know, I think, I think even little Rod said that Diddy had every room taped and bugged. Right. Well, in, in his uh, affidavit, uh, his deposition that he gave to the courts, he said every room was bugged. Um, and that he did have tapes and information on a lot of different celebrities and people in the music business, people that were in politicians. And like I said, in other platforms, people that was in the ministry. Allegedly. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Now, if the feds got their hands on these tapes, you could very well see like a domino effect of shit coming down on everybody. It depends on what's on the tapes. You know what I'm saying? If, if it has anything, see what people don't understand is this, is that 